Hello everyone. Uh, it's the day after the U.S. presidential election and things, the world has changed, uh, at least for uh, America. Donald Trump is the next president of the United States of America. Now, that is an upset uh, from the perspective of the polls leading into the election, from what the pundits expected, from what uh, most reasonable thinking people would have thought should happen. But it's, it's an upset um, in the same order as the Brexit vote. Unlike the Brexit vote, though, this will have a guaranteed impact in just months. There is no uh, waiting to, uh, to determine if Article 50 can be invoked and who has the authority to do it and whether, uh, whether it will happen at all, uh, which Brexit was an advisory rec referendum. This is an actual election which is legally binding. So obviously, the results in, Trump wins, he's the next president of the United States. It was a very close race. Uh, it, was, it was decided uh, by the battleground states, as expected, uh, but it was decided with authority, but on very close results. So, I, you know, so it wasn't really as authoritative as, uh, say, the Trump uh, 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 campaign would have hoped, uh, with uh, some states, you know, with the margin being less than 25,000 votes. Uh, I think that's the case in uh, in Michigan, uh, for instance. It's very, very close, and that makes things uh, uh, interesting because it means that while Trump has won with a fairly good proportion of the electoral college, uh, based on the numbers that I'm looking at uh, currently, that's uh, uh, what is it? I've got it up on a screen over here. Uh, it's, uh, uh, what is the, uh, the total here? Uh, 306 for Trump, uh, out of, and he needed 270. So, uh, that's pretty significant. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the key things here is that he took, uh, he took, uh, Ohio, uh, Pennsylvania, uh, Michigan, Wisconsin, uh, and Florida, that was a key one. He, he, he got Florida. And if I look at the uh, number here, uh, Florida, uh, the difference is uh, 150,000 votes uh, total. Uh, so it's, it's, it was very close. Uh, although uh, we, I don't think we're going to have a hanging Chad situation here. Uh, the margin in Florida is close enough uh, that it was tense, but it's wide enough that it's unlikely that irregularities uh, with uh, voting uh, will have made a substantial difference in the results. Uh, in uh, uh, Michigan, maybe uh, there might be something. Uh, in... Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, New Hampshire, uh, maybe there's something there. Uh, that one, the difference is... Uh, oh, what is it? Uh, 1,500 votes, uh, roughly. Uh, so, uh, you know, the, there could be some challenges in, in uh, some of these. And there will certainly be recounts uh, in some of them, just to be sure. Uh, but... I don't think uh, the margins are narrow enough that we're going to end up with weeks of judicial challenges and so on. Also, given the fact that Clinton has in fact conceded, uh, would tend to suggest that we're not going to see any significant types of challenges, although third parties might try to bring such challenges. 
uh, you know, as not representing either of the main candidates or any of the candidates for that matter. Now, the the result is uh, shocking uh, on the world stage, and the shock was being felt as the results were coming in. Uh, early results didn't have much of an impact because they were basically the expected result. Uh, the early calls were all expected. Uh, states went uh, Democratic or Republican as, uh, well, uh, all of the experts expected. But the result in Florida was really close, and the results were a long time coming, and Trump was leading. Uh, the results in, uh, it took a long time to call Virginia, a really long time to call Pennsylvania um, and Michigan, uh, Wisconsin. Uh, uh, even Ohio was fairly late in things. Um, and then you had, uh, you had things like uh, Arizona and that, that uh, we still had results coming in. Uh, at one o'clock mountain time this morning and uh, you know it's all been called now uh, but uh, and Arizona uh, Alaska they went Republican so in Trump's camp so that widens his margin in the Electoral College and that that means that it's unlikely that uh, there will be any particular challenges because uh, a single state which is about all you could hope for as a result of a challenge, a single state flipping its vote is not likely to change the end result. And, and that's the key point here. Uh, if you're going to mount a challenge, you have to look at what are your chances of succeeding and what are the chances of if you succeed, it makes any difference. And, and that's the key. Uh, Florida, uh, well, um, yeah, even Florida, Flipping wouldn't be enough to change the result, uh, and that's the uh, that's the the important thing there. Uh, so, uh, what we have to do is deal with the result going forward. And there's none of this. The American people are stupid, or they uh, they made a mistake, or what have you. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. But it's their country. They get to run it the way they want. They get to choose their president, whichever president they want. It could, it could be a wingnut, and, you know. Uh, and I want to say, you know, like if you have a hereditary monarchy, it doesn't mean the monarch is any better. So, uh, seriously, uh, let's just get on. Now, the markets took a beating as the results were coming in, but I, th I think Trump's uh, speech, uh, his acceptance speech, I guess, uh, was. Uh, pretty uh, pretty reasonable. Uh, he was talking about building infrastructure, uh, repairing infrastructure. Uh, he was talking about uh, uh, putting America first, which he should do as the leader of the United States. That, that's partly his job, put America first, but be fair with everybody else on the world stage. So if, if this is not just rhetoric, if he actually does mean this, uh, that that his administration is going to be uh, fairly measured and deliberate and is not going to go out and generally, uh, you know, pick conflicts, uh, then uh, maybe it's not so bad, right? Uh, if, he, if it actually materializes the way, um, uh, you know, the way it could based on this speech. And it was actually a quite a reasonable speech, uh, the part, the, the initial bits of it that I listened to before I really needed to go to bed and uh, get some sleep. You know, it was, uh, it was one o'clock in the morning, uh, my time. So, so there you have it. Uh, you know, uh, you had that, and you've got uh, you've got Obama saying the right things. Uh, you've got Clinton saying basically the right things. Everybody's saying, okay, people. We've made a choice, now let's work together, let's make things work. Obviously, there's going to be a policy regime change and, uh, you know, things will change. Uh, that is part and parcel having democracies that basically, uh, where the leadership has to have a performance review every four years or something like that. There's always a chance that you'll get a substantial change in policy. This should not be surprising anybody that it could happen.
Uh, now, what's shocking the world, though, is that every that the people expected Clinton to win. And as I've said previously, I think that would have been a disaster. It wouldn't have been uh, a, a shock in the short term, but I think it would have been a major disaster in the medium to long term. Uh, Trump, on the other hand, I think is going to be a sh it, it was well, obviously a shock, uh, and that's going to last for a little while until he actually starts operating as president. And then I think things will settle out a bit. Uh, I don't know that uh, medium to long term it's going to be the best thing that ever happened. It almost certainly won't be. Uh, but I, I don't think it's going to be near as bad as people think it is because it is just that. It's a shock to the system and it's a major change. And that was the point of the vote, I think, uh, that... Uh, collectively, the American people want change. And Trump was the only credible option to, to serve as an agent of that change. And this is not something that's happening in a vacuum. Uh, it, you know, I think that's, that's partly what led to the Brexit vote as well, that uh, there was a large contingent of, of Britons that... Uh, that actually uh, uh, wanted change, and uh, by voting for leave, they, it serves as a catalyst to uh, shock the system into waking up and realizing that things need to change. I think that was the actual point, uh, the actual indication that should be taken from Brexit. And I think that's the same thing that should be taken from uh, the U.S. presidential election. And even closer to home in Alberta, I think that's the the take home for from the last provincial election where uh, we actually, in my opinion, made an error by electing the NDP. Uh, but it was a it was a massive seismic protest vote. It was a we need change. Uh, the same old, same old is not working. We need change. So. Here's a change. Uh, and, and I really do think that in the Alberta election, the protest vote actually backfired. Uh, people were, were doing a protest vote and it backfired and they got what they voted for. Uh, that may actually be the case in the United States as well, uh, that there was a lot of protest votes against Clinton who represented the establishment. And... Perhaps those backfired because they, they put their protest vote with Trump instead of with a third party. Uh, whereas in Alberta, we actually put our votes with a third party and it won. Um, but, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's neither here nor there. That, that doesn't have any bearing on the U.S. election. But what my point is that I think the, uh, the desire for change is not just there with the American people. It's not just, it's not there with just the Americans and the Brits. It's also there in parts of Canada. It's there the world over, a, a desire for change. And I think that's, uh, I, th I think that's important uh, that politicians recognize that, recognize that the same old, same old is starting to pale and uh, things have to change. Uh, the Keys to Power, um, you should watch uh, a, a couple of CGP Grey videos on uh, the Keys to Power and rules for, uh, for rulers. Um, the Keys to Power want a change in these countries. And uh, it's starting to... Uh, it's starting to snowball. Uh, so I think the... the the established, um, uh, uh, the entrenched interests need to actually sit up and notice what's going on because they might find themselves on the wrong side of a coup, uh, figuratively speaking, uh, especially in the so-called democracies of the Western world. Anyway, uh, that's a tangent and of course, uh, that's what I do is tangents, right? But anyway, uh, the end result here is we have President Donald Trump taking, taking office in January. And 
he's going to have a majority uh, Republican Congress, so he might be able to accomplish something. Uh, and I don't actually think he's going to do things that are so out there and so wing nutty that it's going to permanently damage the American uh, uh, economy or, or anything like that. I think, though, uh, he's going to continue to speak his mind uh, more often than maybe people would be comfortable with. And I think that'll probably play reasonably well in the international stage. Just everybody will know where they stand with the guy. And I think that will help. But still, uh, overall, I don't think this is going to be the disaster that uh, the mainstream media uh, has made it out to be. Uh, we have a short-term shock for sure. But the market's dropping, uh, I don't think is, is a bad thing because they are already overinflated due to quantitative easing and things like that. So having them drop is not necessarily a bad thing. Having them drop precipitously, that's a little bit more worrying. But given that while they dropped sharply overnight, trading today did show a little bit of a recovery. So if that continues, then uh, the shock from, uh, from this election probably won't be as significant as the uh, Brexit shock uh, has been. And that's partly because now most of the uncertainty is past. We know that Trump is going to be president. And uh, now the only uncertainty is... Who's his cabinet going to be and what's he going to do? And we'll find that out in, in uh, three or four months at the outside. We'll know, uh, we'll, we'll know what the tone of his presidency is going to be. And then uh, I think the major shocks will be done. Uh, unlike Brexit, which, uh, you know, four months later, uh, or three months later, what is it? Uh, yeah, four months later. Uh, the... Uh, it's still up in the air and unknown, and until that settles, the uh, chaos from Brexit isn't going to settle. Uh, so uh, here's hoping that the uh, Brits can sort that out and clean up their chaos. Whatever they choose to do, let's make sure they figure it out. And the Americans have made their choice, and we'll see what the fallout's going to be. That's all we can do. It, the choice is made. But you know what? I do still believe that this was the best outcome from the possible outcomes of this election. Uh, the fact that it was close means that uh, Trump doesn't have a massive mandate. Even though he has the electoral votes, he doesn't have a massive mandate because he lost the popular vote. And that means that if he wants to seek a second term, he'll have to behave. So we'll see what happens. Uh, it, it will be interesting. Uh, you know, I think we live in interesting times. And while that is, in fact, a curse, I think it's possibly better than living in boring times. Uh, at least there's something happening. So anyway... Uh, that's enough on the on that on this for now. Uh, I might end up talking about it later when we know more what's going on. But for now, if you want to be notified of future videos, make sure to subscribe. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.